All right, party people, welcome to this another episode of Office Hour. This is Brent Ozar and we are going to take very first question from the poll web and we're going to discuss some fun stuff and the, your questions. And the first question is, what happened to you? Did you spend too much time under the sun? Okay, no, no, so actually the reality is different. I actually forgot to turn on one of the lights. That's why what you see me a little different, but it's the same <laughs> Brent Ozar. Oh, no. All right. Hello. Also, it's also Brent Ozar's uh, uh, lighter brother. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yes. yes. Howdy party people and welcome to our office hours today. And I'll drop by my house, so ta-da. Uh, yes. And we'll actually answer your questions. So the first question that comes up and we'll both answer them. Uh, first question came in from Accidental DBA who asks, how do I explain to the third party IT group that manages our servers that server image backups aren't enough alone to back up and restore SQL? What do you say? Well, I mean, see, it's our task to take a backup of the server. So then why are we going to depend on anybody else, first of all? So that's my first problem. We have to take off it. But if you are going to give the task to somebody else, and if they make a mistake, are you going to hold them responsible, or are you going to be responsible yourself about it? So if you are just going to be comfortably blaming them, then good enough. Just let them do their work. But if you ask me, I would always prefer to take my own backup so I can do other things with it. I can take, restore the backup. I can run various tests whenever I need. And I have confidence that this is backed up. If something goes wrong there, I would have my own backup. So I would always make sure there is at least one copy of mine, which is good enough, safe and saved. And then personally experienced one time I've seen there was an operating system backup was going on. And when that restores actually our own backup was failing. So, you know, they might be taking backup at the point where our own backup was failing and now you have a bad copy in that one. So, you know, best practice, um, if you trust them, go ahead. But if you ask me, I think I would have one copy. What do you think? Yeah, I'm a huge fan of Ronald Reagan's quote, trust but verify. So yeah. if they're doing a great job, just find out. Say, I need a copy of it as of yesterday at 3 right. p.m how fast can you get it to me and start a clock and watch and see does the backup come back yeah. successfully and how long does it take yeah absolutely all right next up question let's see here oh i love this for uh nikos asks what are the best and worst database technologies for placing career bets and I love asking Pinal this because he's recorded a ton of different training videos at Pluralsight on different technologies. Yes. We actually had a conversation similar uh, to this at breakfast. Yes, yes. absolutely. Yes. Breakfast was very good. That's why if you guys see me a little heavy, it's because of breakfast. <laughs> yes, yeah, I feed well, him a lot. Oh, well, that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> yes. yes. So, yeah, yeah the, so, so best and worst database technology. This is fantastic. So, I work with many different technologies. Only thing I would say, if you are beginning your career right now, I would strongly suggest that you go with something which is open source, easily available, and heavily documented. You just don't want to go with any fancy new technology out there which doesn't have enough documentation. I mean, there is a document, every company has a dev.something.com. Don't trust that only. You just have to see if there is enough documentation out of that, maybe in a stake overflow, maybe in a various blogging things out, many people just praising it. Even though those are the paid people, they're praising it, or even paid people criticizing it. You just want a lot of awareness of the product and if that is the product out there, I want to start my particular career with it. I'll go with something open source today. But let me tell you a very quick secret. If you ask me as a blogger today, I would pick a technology which is least possibly blogged because I want people to come to my blog. I want people to come here and, and I want to build content which is not out there. You know, good marketing, good money, and eventually good consulting. So pick your side where you are. Are you a consultant? Are you a developer? Where you want to start with and find uh, your niche. But yeah, there you go. What do you think? I wouldn't change anything about that answer at all. I, I love that answer. And I'm, this is where I think it's so much fun having somebody else in the office answer these because I'm like, I wouldn't have come up with that. And I agree with it exactly. I'm like, that, that makes total sense. Right. So find your balance. I love that. And then we'll do one more from Minnie. Minnie asks, what was your least favorite version of SQL Server and why? 
this is interesting one it seems like i'm going to pick up something which everybody is going to say it's bad but you know the truth is that i would not call it a version i would just say it was a progression at once upon a time and that was okay so if you are going to call it version because this one had its own compatibility level well to name it it's a sql server 2008 r2 uh -huh. so r2 yeah, had a yeah, yeah. it had its own compatibility level how do i know which version are you on are you on r2 or not r2 well or regular or however you want to say so the version itself has a identity issue as per my opinion uh -huh, uh -huh. and then after the product uh, i see had was progression they fixed few things but again the documentation was challenged we couldn't separate it out was it for previous version later version dynamic uh -huh. dmvs breaking here and there so that version i would say um, I, i would not prefer on my own favorite list i think it's yeah. at bottom yeah sure Absolutely. Yeah. What about you? Uh, I I think I probably agree with that because people weren't sure whether it was a service pack or whether it was something you had to pay for. There, there was some confusion there. I would say my fav my least favorite was probably 2000 because it didn't have good DMVs. Right. And I remember as somebody who was trying to write scripts, I couldn't get the stuff I needed out of it easily. And then I had the terrible problem where uh, as like 2005, 2008, we were still supporting 2000. So I had to have scripts that worked across both and that really sucked. Um, right. Nothing against the product. The product Absolutely. was fine. You know, yeah, it was just those were awkward moments in history. Yes, absolutely. Same thing. Like R2 is confusion. Yeah. All about confusion. And I think the later version become better. So let me ask you another question yeah. right now. That's not how this works. <laughs> uh, yes. All right, fine, fine. fine. Yes. Okay. So no. So which version you like the most in a recent time for oh. SQL Server? Oh, that's really good. I would say 2016. Um, 2017 for me didn't have amazing stuff. It seemed to fit more right. of a Linuxy kind of version. Right. So 2016 was very robust. They made all kinds of improvements around availability groups, column store. I like that quite a bit. I also like 2019. 2019 right. was pretty good. Both those 2016 and 2019 were were right. great in my opinion. How about you? Oh, I, I always like the latest version because you right. know those guys. The, 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 there, are, there are people who just like me who just always think you know the latest version is the greatest version, and because I can always find something which did the your previous version can do it. Uh, but there has been some time awkward moments where people say, "Well, does your uh, current version can do what previous version was able to do?" At that time, I just have to look down. But yeah, um, mostly the recent version is usually my favorite version. Uh, is the case, and uh, I actually, you guys have no idea. I had such a great time last two days. We <laughs> hung around. We had a lot of fun. I got a lot of behind the scene. And unless and until you see things behind the scene, that's hard to really imagine how much work goes through <laughs> this this setup right now. Oh yeah, yeah, the cameras and the audio and all that. You'll 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 also be who watch all the time. We'll notice that the audio is a little different because we're using normally I use the Britney Spears microphone right. and we're using a group microphone inside here. But it's hilarious to see someone else in the office too. Yeah, you know, to have someone else. I'm just fortunate. See yeah. all the different things that are in on display and stuff. Yes, like and that, and, so. and things which you've seen in a career. I mean, all my career progression. Some of the things which is just. being placed here like with the Mickey Mouse hands and uh, I just realized I should give you something I should give you this so this is a let's see what is in it da 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 yeah a real because it's fake <laughs> oh that's awesome <laughs> i saw oh, it yes. <laughs> there's an instagram was selling like oh, fake, awesome. uh, fake rolexes and i was like how good are they really so i'm like i got uh, one just to see how it was no they're terrible uh, that's, 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 <laughs> hey, this is the thing look, look on look your face, face. <laughs> I'll go and check it out. So this is the one one. I'm not giving him a Rolex. Well, <laughs> not this one. I'm not even <laughs> buying a Rolex for myself. Yeah, yes. Anyway, it was so good. Yeah, I love that, that look on your face. Well, all right. Well, thanks for hanging out with us, everybody. Thanks, Pinal, for dropping by. And we will see you all in the next office hours. All right. Yes. Bye.